Only winner of all today, I'm going to review why I'm no longer talking about race by Remy at all large. So if you're interested, keep watching. <laughs> Sorry to my review, I would highly appreciate if you subscribe, if you're not subscribed already, and if you would give a like to this video, and also in the end like comment if you have any commentary to make about the book, um, is if there is something I said that you don't agree with, if there is something that you agree with, put it down in the comments and let's have a chat. Um, it would be Ali appreciated. So I was really excited to read this book because, like most European, my black history consists mainly in black American history because we have those really famous figures that come from the civil rights movement in the United States. Um, uh, when you see their name, everybody knows them. And we kind of had something similar here in Europe, but we don't have any names, we don't know the stories of, this peop of those people, we don't know what happened, it's never mentioned during history classes, like we talk about coloni colonization but we never talk about what impact it had um, until today and we barely mention racism and it's barely a subject. Um, it might change now with everything that happen uh, what's going on but I was excited to have a book about race and racism that was set in Europe instead of the United States um, and this one does and it's set up um, it's focusing mainly on the on race and racism in Great Britain but I think we can extrapolate that to Europe it is really important that in Europe we stop um, turning a blind eye to racism and one way to do it is to look at our history and this book does it really well and it's a good start to learn about racism in Europe and it probably would trigger you to learn about racism in your own country if you live in Europe or even somewhere else um, and I definitely recommend it I definitely suggest you put it uh, in your TBR uh, because it was really good to make she made a complex subject really easy to understand and um, I read it in a few days um, because it was so interesting so why not talking about race to white people anymore Rainy really, large makes it clear from the start of the book that first of all white people tend to think that their experience in life is universal and that everyone is under the same opportunity and some people tend to believe that you know like it's not your race is not going to affect you if you try to get a job you just need to work hard study hard whatever and you will end up getting a job and so if you don't get a job like people will just assume like you need to try harder and not going to assume that oh maybe it's a race problem and it's um, really hard to distinguish between the two of like you know but we don't live in a world of meritocracy we live in a world of nepotism and by your whiteness the world was made for you and you are benefiting from a large system working for you when you are white and it's something you just need to realize and lots of white people don't realize that so basically white people believe that their experience as a result of their skin color should be universal and cannot absolutely be not universal <laughs> And Rini at the Lodge, like so many black people, is tired of the defensiveness and the denial of racism by white people. So we don't want to talk about <laughs> that about them anymore. Or 
for me if we talk to that if we if we talk about it to them it should be paid my at this point it should be paid uh, there are so many free resources out there there are books well it's not free but there are many res free resources plus books plus documentaries plus and with billions of things we arrive to a moment where you should not ask your f black friend to explain to you racism and what is it and how is it because there's lots of things out there and if they want to talk to you they want to talk to you but don't take it personally if they don't want to talk to you because it's tiring and often they will be eager to prove a point and to prove to you that they are not racist and again it's not because you did something racist that you're bad person everybody's racist everybody displayed racist behaviors even me you just learn and apply the knowledge and it's okay if you said something racist one day and know you know better and you know not to say that and the worst people are the ones that do recognize racism and are like yeah it's really bad but i don't see color and i want equality <laughs> and i think everybody is equal and those people are the worst because they are not the biggest like fascist people white extremist people because at least those people we see them we can see them we can point their fingers at them and be like that's really bad but those other people who are like we see racism but it shouldn't be about colors we should all be equal um are just worse because they could help but by saying things like we don't see color they are just maintaining the status quo and you do see color because when you come back from holidays and you have 10 you say to me like look i look like you so you do see colors <laughs> so don't lie and this matter matters and also when we talk about racism to white people we always need to be careful of how we say things and what to say because we need to validate their feelings even when it's not about them like i'm pretty sure everybody heard about white guilt and white tears which is basically when white people hear about racism and are being karen <laughs> and just be like oh my god like it's horrible what we need to do those people but they're actually not moving the conversation along they're actually not taking action so that you know we can stop racism like crying doesn't bring things forward especially when you're not concerned about the problem <laughs> um and for all of these reasons I understand that some black people don't want to talk to white people about racism uh, without, it's without talking about also those people who are truly believing that white racism is a thing um, but racist, white racism is not a thing because black people just don't have enough power and are not in enough higher positions that it impacts the life of all white people so yes a black person can be prejudiced against you and say something to you like oh you white people you're always like that um and categorize you in the same group um and i also find it funny that no white people are like oh but we should not put would be put in the same group and you're like you've done that to us for decades now <laughs> you've done that to us you grouped us by black asian um what, latinos like we used to that and know that we are saying like white people so we're like no you should say some white people 
well, you don't say some black people, you don't say some Latinos, so I'm not going to do that for you either. Um, but anyway, like, it's hard to deal with all of this, and uh, uh, back to the, the right racism thing, it's not possible because it does not impact your life if one or several black people have prejudice against you, but when a whole <laughs> population that is way more privileged than you as prejudice against you it impacts all your life and it can prevent you from getting a job prevent you from getting a house prevent you from getting good grades um and this is racism when the old structure works against you but as a white person the whole structure does not work with you no does it mean you have it easy no you can be poor you can have suffer lots of things but you will still be better off than a black person just by the color of your skin and it's time to recognize this so yeah those are some of the reasons not to talk to white people about race i would i would still do if like someone wants to have a conversation and a debate with me but um you must be open-minded uh, you know, if you're just going to try to prove to me that racism does not exist, I'm not going to believe you. <laughs> um, and yeah, and um, Rene Edelard like mentions that it's ironic because since she published that book that's like so controversial because of the title, uh, she spent her time talking about race <laughs> to white people. Um, but it's good because she's getting paid for that now and yeah because she reminds us that publishing the publishing industry is predominantly white so the book um would not have been published without talking to white people <laughs> so i found this just funny so first um Edel Lodge digs into the history of the uk and slavery and all people in great britain were seeing the money coming in but since so many slaves were working in the caribbean mostly like people were seeing the money but they were not seeing the suffering they were not seeing the murdering they were not seeing any blood being spilled um so they had like a you know far away vision from black people and then when the slavery was abolished um it was not black people who were compensated but black owners were compensated because they lost their slaves <laughs> and then um black people were allowed to move to great britain mostly because they fought during the first world war because you know if you have a black man let's exploit him to the maximum we can um but the problem was that it's not a brief the abolition of slavery the vision of people did not change overnight and they were still saying black people as like almost animals that they could treat like shit um and this vision was not going to change overnight just because we decided to abolish slavery so it has an impact an impact that we can still see to this day. And so the response of white people to these black people being there was rioting and protesting because allegedly black people were doing bad stuff and criminal activities. Allegedly, we would never know if that was true or not. <laughs> and also police started targeting black people and ransacking their houses. Um, so we see there like Great Britain was all here when it was for free labor and for exploiting black people, but then when they had to face the consequence of racism that they created by telling to white people that all oh, black people are nobodies and we can treat them like shit, they were not there. They didn't want to deal with the consequences. At some point, they even wanted to send back black people. Um, I think they did at some point, they, they sent back black people. <laughs> to, to the, um, I don't know if it's to the Caribbean or Africa exactly, but decided to send them back 
because they were not prepared to deal with the consequences of their action. So basically, black and brown labors served to get Great Britain to where it is and to where it was, um, but black people will face re rejections for years to come, even till this day. And of course, with black people coming to the UK, they started the police and politicians starting to link blackness with criminality and police starting er erasing black people. Like there are a few records, but there was this association that gathered like 76 reports of harassment. And from those 76 reports, there were like 45 people who got released without charges, so there was no reason to arrest them in the first place. Um, but at the time, they had like a vagrancy act where police could search and arrest anyone they suspected of having committed a crime. And um, I think there was a study um, that was made in 2015 that showed that they were targeting mainly black people. <laughs> Um, and it's funny because it's some people, even to this day, seem to think that if you take away all the, the foreign people, all the minorities from your country, you're going to add blackness, thief, and crime, etc. And we just know that it's not true. <laughs> so, yeah. So knowing this, we see that we need to look at racism and history of our countries because racism does not come from an external place, it comes from the inside. It was internal to begin with. Um, and it's countries that benefited from free black labor that then um, didn't assume the consequences of the racism that they created in the first place. And we need to understand that racism is embedded in the system, a system that protects the police, a system that makes you believe that the only people who can be racist are white nationalists and extremists. But if that was the case, fighting racism would be easy because we just need to point the finger to that group and be like, we need you need to do something about it and we, we, we certainly need to do something about it but there are also a lot of people who are biased and they don't even know and it's hard because they're not racist they're just biased and sometimes the bias is there unconsciously and you don't want to be biased and you don't want to admit that you are because who wants to admit that they are wrong. But we are all biased, even black people. And when we come to work with the public, those biases are automatic and we just follow the flow, just like even if we are black ourselves. Um, so this is why it's really extremely important that we are all working to understand our biases and fighting them. <laughs> but it's there and it just comes together and build this whole system that works against black people and any other minorities in general. There's also the question of white privilege and how hard it is to explain that to white people because oh do you explain something that you don't have? <laughs> like, um, like it's easier for people who don't have it to see it but for you it's like your whole life was based on privilege so you don't see it as a privilege but it's an absence of race being seen first it's an absence of less likely to succeed because of my race it's an absence of glances when you are in a field or in a room where people just assume that no black people would be there it's an absence of cultural expectation from you just because you're black and the list goes on and on and I get that it's hard to see it if you didn't experience it and lack of it and never had to talk about it up until this point. And it was like a concept of an hilarious which was the fear of the black planet and which is basically 
white people who are fearing that they're going to be replaced by black people and minorities and that there will be no white left and it's especially funny because in Great Britain like 80% of the population is white so it will take some time before getting there um, but they are afraid to be replaced and it's really funny because those same people tell you that racism does not exist but if racism does not exist why are you so afraid to become the minority because racism doesn't exist so even if the minority becomes the majority your life won't change will it and yeah they just have this irrational fear um and also it's funny but it's kind of not but it's a good example of why we need intersectionality in feminism because because of this irrational fear those people who fear that they're going to have like no white people left <laughs> um, are saying to white women that they need to produce more babies so that we don't outnumbered by minorities <laughs> and so they put like a social uh, pressure and expectation on white women that comes from being racist basically and you see how oh, it's linked <laughs> and why we should care about racism when we are feminist and actually Rene Dolage also talks about the feminist question which is important because if you're feminist you should care about racism for what I mentioned but many other things um, and to understand that I could not recommend enough Woman Race and Class by Angela Davis. You should read it if you haven't already. Um, and she talks about how race is important and how like women and especially white women need to understand that we're not um, subject to discrimination the same because we don't have the same color, skin color. And the other mentioned one time where she was a TV show with Laura Betts and Caroline Criado, Criado Perez, um, which is the author of Invisible Women, that I will read later this year. Um, I know she was asked why race was so important in the feminism movement, and she started talking, and Caroline interrupted her and said that some people hold anti racism to as an excuse to arrest and bully her and it was true but first of all she interrupted the only black woman in the room and i see that happening so so much um as like in general with women like they get interrupted all the time but it's like people invite black women to their shows and they will just interrupt her when she sees something extreme <laughs> or radical yeah more like radical what they think is radical like i don't think it's radical to want basic human rights for us but apparently that's all they call it nowadays <laughs> and um and she by doing that she interrupted a black woman and she associated like anti-racist views with harassment and bullying and you know, like people are going to use whatever they want to arrest you and bully you, and they should that they should not. But it doesn't mean that all anti-racist people are like that. You know, it's like it's, the problem is not with anti-racism; it's with those people, and the difference should be made. Um, anyway, long story short, to say that I'm going to read this book later, and I'm totally going to look if race was mentioned just even one time in this book because of that story and some feminists will say that talking about race is closing the debate and impedes freedom of speech and that they cannot say anything because they call racist blah blah, blah. but like you need, we need to stop trying to make us think that everybody's treated the same because it's not the case we have discrimination at several levels and race and class and gender and sexuality, all of this is intertwined and needs to be taken into account in the feminism movement. And it's hard, but 
that's what we need to do. She also did exam and more into a class and gentif gentrif gentrification. I'll put it there. <laughs> um, but you can just read the book to learn more about this. All in all, anti-racism is a, the work of a lifetime and it's not going to end just by reading a book. You need to read the book, apply the knowledge, spread the message. Um, but also it's really important to act in your private life, in your work life, because that's what's going to matter the most. Did you comment? Did you subscribe? Did you like this video? Well, you should do it now! <laughs> See you!